In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Mary's song of praise that appears here in Luke is a very ancient song. Uh, whenever we encounter lyrics from songs in Scripture, as we do from time to time, there's some other famous examples, we can be assured that those songs uh, weren't written at the time that the Bible was compiled by the people that wrote this gospel, but in fact had been told in the community for a long time. Uh, these were hymns that were uh, sung by people uh, when they thought of Mary in the early Christian community before they wrote this gospel down. So what we have here is a very, very old song. The thing about music and songs is that they have this way of expressing things that would otherwise be inexpressible. The emotional resonance of music uh, brings out something about the harmony of all creation that can bring us uh, to a place where we seem to vibrate with whatever emotion that that song carries with it. A good example from just this morning is that song, Alleluia, which uh, is uh, a version of uh, Leonard Cohen's famous Alleluia song. And uh, Gerald and Allison have been doing it for, for some time. I've, I've heard it a number of times. And I have to say, it, it never gets old. <laughs> I could listen to that on repeat on my, my, my phone forever and ever because that's such a wonderful, um, melancholy, and yet so beautifully uplifting music. It, it just pulls you along in such a, a gorgeous way. Um, this week, as I was preparing to preach and thinking about what I would say, one of the things I came across was a, a, about a 10-minute meditation from a website called Pray As You Go. And they took this and, uh, and spent about 12 or 15 minutes meditating on it. And uh, I'm going to walk you through a bit of that in a few minutes. But one of the things that they did to start off this, this, this uh, meditation was they had this gorgeous version of the Magnificat, this, this song of Mary being sung by this gorgeous voice in a highly resonant space. I imagine some English cathedral somewhere. And the speaker talked about how, you know, how the, this, this song it, that she sings, it's, it's a song, it's the culmination of, of the hope and prayers of all the people of the world. And it speaks to us no matter where we might be. And particularly, it touches us in that place which is longing for something more than this life has given us so far. This song resonates with that part of us that feels a bit empty, a bit lonely. It touches something in us that, that draws us into the hope of a God who loves us as a father loves his children. Um, those, those beautiful words from, from uh, Paul's letter to the Galatians about uh, this, this spirit of adoption and how we, we call to God not as this kind of distant, angry figure on a mountain somewhere, but, but, as, but as someone familiar to us from our own families, as, as Father, Abba. I don't know about you, but, but my relationship with my father is not perfect. And I don't think anybody's is, or with my mother for that matter. And, uh, but there's something about the Heavenly Father which completes all those hopes and aspirations which we otherwise might not have had completed in our lives. Many people go around through our world with a certain kind of, of hole in them, a certain kind of lack, and, and they go from relationship to relationship hoping to fill that lack with some kind of new form of, of love, whether it's romantic or familial or, or just a friendship. But the truth is that that gap that exists at the very heart of who we are is something that can only be fulfilled by God's special love for us, a love which Mary seems to resonate as she participates in the parenthood of God by bearing his son into the world. Mary, beautiful Mary, who we, we resonate with. You know, uh, uh, it's interesting that you know, we Protestants don't generally celebrate the Marian feast to the degree that Roman Catholics do, but I took a special privilege of, of transferring the feast of Mary from Friday when it's normally celebrated to Sunday just so I could, I could share it with you because it hits us on such an emotional level. It hits us on such an emotional level. We can hear the song of Mary. We can imagine her greeting her cousin Elizabeth. These two pregnant women have this embrace which echoes for 2,000 years in this song. One of my favorite pieces of art is called, is, is called The Visitation. And it's, uh, it was done by uh, Bill Viola, who's an artist that works in video as his format. And what he did was he had two actresses who were both pregnant, real, in real life pregnant, and he had them come together and embrace in a hug, 
just, just that simple gesture. And he recorded it at a super high frame rate, like 120 frames per second. And then what he did is he put it on a huge monitor and he just played it in slow motion, these two women coming together and, and greeting each other. And when you watch that piece, and I think it's on YouTube if you really want to look for it, um, you're, you're struck by the fact that this encounter happens somehow out of time. He dressed them in clothes that were uh, difficult to describe what time period. I mean, it could have been ancient Palestine, it could have been you know, modern day, the way they were dressed. And that's part of the nature of their encounter. In it, we see something which is familiar and recognizable, something about that embrace. So now I, I want to walk you through this, this song again, and, and we're gonna, I'm going to read it four times. And after each time, I'm going to ask you to do something else in your imagination. And you can uh, close your eyes if you wish, or keep them open, or, or, or do what you please. Um, after each time I read it, I'll, I'll ask you perhaps to share something, just, just one or two words, just very, very brief. Just, just, you don't need the microphone, just, just share it if it comes to you. And if not, we'll just sit in the silence for a few moments, for a few breaths. Well, first time. Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. Is there a word or an image which speaks to you? Is there a phrase that rings? Lift it up. Generation to generation. Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. 
How does this song make you feel? As you encounter their encounter, what does this stir up for you? What emotion do you feel? Do you share their delight? Do you mourn a loss? What do you feel? Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. Whatever you feel, bring it before God now. Allow it to draw you into conversation with God. Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. 
He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Now resting in God's presence, what does God say to you? Feel yourself as Mary in the scene. Feel yourself as full of baby, full of God's promise, embracing your cousin. Feel the love of that embrace. Feel the song that springs up. Feel yourself as embraced by God, the parent who loves you perfectly. Say with me, Abba. Abba, 